Morning, everybody. I see the little sound mixer is moving correctly, so I know I have sound today. <laughs> Last week was a little amusing, and, you know, life happens, and everything just, you know, amateurs when it comes to doing YouTube. Uh, I don't have a, what is it, a whole team and everything out there that says, Hey, Russ, you're doing anything wrong. I do have awesome viewers that let me know when something's not quite right. So I think that's awesome. I hope we're all having an awesome morning today. It has already been a little bit of an adventure. Uh, got up early this morning. Thankfully, I got out of bed a little bit earlier than normal. So I can take Riley around the neighborhood. And now thinking back, if I had done just the little loop like I usually do first thing in the morning, there wouldn't have been probably any problems. But I did the larger loop because I was like, I've got extra time. And when we came around the cor last corner, there was a dog out. And it's a dog that I had never seen, so I didn't know anything about the dog. And uh, Riley and I, we sat back at the corner and the dog just started running the other direction and who i assume was the owner was just piddling behind just slowly trying to catch it i'm like really so after about waiting for about five or six minutes we start walking and i get to the house that's next to mine and the dog has now seen us they were coming back and still uncontrolled <laughs> and the dog starts coming towards Riley. I just scoop up Riley and like, you know, halfway threaten the dog and say, you get near me, you in trouble. If I didn't have Riley, I'd be like, oh, look at the cute little puppy. But dogs are um, unpredictable um, when it comes to each other. So I am not letting you mess around with my baby girl because, you know, that's not the way to do Went to Saturday Sampler this morning because it is the Saturday that I go. They do it first and third Saturday. And I did my show and tell. I showed the rope bowl that I made a couple weeks ago. And then I also showed the, uh, the bag. And I was the only show and tell in our session. So uh, there's going to be very few show and tells probably when they do quilt show Sunday. But I had fun, picked up my current block, and when I got into the car and sat down, I heard a giant rip. And I was like, uh-oh. The whole side of my shorts just busted out. And the shorts are several, several years old, so it's not like they haven't gotten their use. I wear those shorts a lot, so <laughs> like... Okay, they finally decided to bust or ready. So they, they were just ready. They were feeling starting to feel a little thin and they got to be fully thin. So came home. I solved that wardrobe malfunction. I ate breakfast and then I had another wardrobe malfunction where the honey that I put on my biscuit dripped on my shirt. <laughs> so yeah, that was two wardrobe malfunctions this morning, but I did get everything cut for the block. So I picked up the block literally an uh, hour and a half ago, not even. And I got home, I got everything cut and everything. So we are going to be sewing up the month two of Saturday Sampler. And the reason why we're doing month two is I initially wanted to do Fort Worth Fabric Studio, but this week for Fort Worth Fabric Studio was just all cutting. And it's just going to be boring to watch me cut. So <laughs> I said, you know, if I get Saturday Sampler home and started, then I at least have something to sew for everybody. So I hope everybody's having an awesome morning. Let's see who is here. Uh, good morning, Candice. Good morning, Cynthia, who is suggesting folks to give a thumbs up. Uh, good morning, Kathy. Good morning, Jacqueline. Good morning, Colleen, who says hello, Russ, and everyone else. I just got home from the annual vet check. All's well except my wallet. I feel you the same thing last week when I had to take Percy to the vet. But uh, 
everything came back fine with Percy. He's just, you know, being a little bit of a drama queen, I think. Uh, good morning, Diana, and good morning, Stephanie. So, like I said, I hope everybody's having an awesome day. What is everyone working on out there? Because, like, I did not get any type of instructions out until late last night. I do have a similar block to this in the description below if you want to sew along with the Saturday Sampler. I don't know any fabric requirements for any of this with the Saturday Sampler. I just am making this up as I go, like my shop that I go to pretty much does. So don't ask me what you need. <laughs> uh, the block that I did put in the description as I said, is a similar block. It's got the exact same shape. You just have to swap some pieces around. Or you can do it like that because this program is called Choose Your Own Adventure. And now that I'm almost thinking about it, I probably could have swapped a couple pieces out <laughs> and made a slightly different block closer to what I have posted as if you want to follow along instructions. But I didn't think about that, and I've already got everything cut. Uh, I've got uh, my two and a half inch squares. I've got a bunch of quarter squares for the triangle, even though the instructions are saying that it wants to do half square triangles and then face those together. I'm not a fan of doing that since I found out that you could just cut the quarter squares together. That's the easier way. And then this is the center square again, uh, because they are giving us fat eights. I think if we're using what, or they're trying to tell us to use what we can in order to, um, for them not to have to give us a whole bunch of extra fabric. So they gave us all fat eights and they gave us a fat eighth of this fabric last month, but they didn't give us any of it this month because last month we only cut a three and a half inch square. Yeah, that's the math. And uh, this month we needed a four and a half inch square. So it doesn't make sense to give a whole fat eighth for that if you've already got a whole bunch of leftovers. So that was a lot of awesomeness and it'll be fun. Uh, Cand uh, good morning, Tessa. I want to get you ahead first. Candace says she's cleaning up her sewing room, never enough storage. I agree. I need to get in here and start doing some organization at some point. Uh, Stephanie is catching up on much needed sleep this morning. Feeling great now, so listening while she gets her day going. I hope part of your day is getting the, um, what is it? Shoreline fabric up and running because, you know, I need some of that. <laughs> not that I'm in, I'm not in any rush. So it's when you finally get it in. Uh, the quilt shop that I go to, they finally got Tula Pink's Roar in, and they had been feeling very antsy because they were watching other quilt shops online say, oh, we've got it, we've got it, we got it, and they were still waiting. So they've been stalking the FedEx guy, I or UPS guy, one of the two guys, whoever they get shipments from. So I haven't figured out what I'm gonna do with Roar, but I will find something. So let me switch over to that setup. Uh, part of what the thing, the pattern wants me to do is to do a whole bunch of, uh, what are these things called? Half square triangles. And their method obviously is to cut out squares and uh, do them that way. I like triangulation, so I'm doing it this way. You are welcome to do your half square triangles any way you like. But like I said, they give us a little bit extra with these things and I'm able to just say, hey, this is what I want to do. If I wanted to switch some of these colors around, I could. I don't quite feel brave enough because like I said, they've not given us one of the fabrics because we have enough from previous so i don't know what they are going to do with any of these others in the future so i might as well try to make it as close to what they are envisioning as possible 
if I had all of the fabrics that I wanted, like when I was doing the socialites quilt, I would have just said, okay, I will make however it comes out and just randomly pick fabrics each month. But at this point, when it's Saturday Sampler and you don't know what their vision is and I don't have the extra fabric, I'm just going with what they are visioning. Stephanie says that the retreat knocked her out. I mean, the retreats always knock us out. We, Because we're always up late, but she's getting productive today and tomorrow. I really enjoyed the Georgia retreat, but it did it it knocked me out of commission. <laughs> I made a comment that I should have taken an extra day or two off at the beginning of the year after the retreat just be just to recover. Because it takes a minute to recover from all that fun. This afternoon, I have an eye appointment after the live, or as I like to call it, getting my head examined. I'm going to have to talk with my eye doc and say, you know, the contacts work, but there's a little bit of, hey, I'd like a little bit clearer vision at times. But I know that if I do that, he is going to tell me bifocals. And I don't know if I exactly want to start wearing bifocals yet. I know in the next couple of years, it's on its way so it's not like it's avoidable but I want to avoid it as long as I can. Good morning Luane from Sewing with Luane. Uh, he says morning Russ and Quilty friends. He did his first live last week and it was awesome. Okay, let's see. Which direction do I want to do this? I want to put you on top. And you on the bottom. Because these are going to be put into a quarter square triangle piece with like this, this, and this. And since this is the same thing as this i can just stack up all of my pieces like this and uh sew them uh karen asks if i can get cheap readers from the drugstore i mean that's kind of what these are <laughs> cheap readers uh they work but i'm also starting to experience a little bit of blurriness in my depth and a lot of it is because I have an astigmatism and for the folks who don't know because I did not know for the longest time an astigmatism is basically instead of your eyeball being round your eye is slightly football shaped um, maybe it's closer to a rugby ball I know sports ball references are lost on most of us and uh, you essentially have two focus points in your in your eye. And if you look just wrong or just right, you can get almost like two of something in your vision. So at night and stuff, I will be driving along and the yellow dashed lines, uh, I see double of if I... Am slightly out of focus and they do make contacts for astigmatism but they are what's called toric lenses and if you do this 
the contact just shifts and becomes very, very painful. So I had those when I first started contacts and it meant I could not lay on the couch because everything was shift. Uh, the contacts I also wear are night and days. So it saves me, you know, 10, 15 minutes in the mornings from having to put my contacts in. And uh, if I switched to Torix, I would have to take those out every night and put new fresh ones in every or put them back in in the morning which like i said it's, it's 15 minutes it's not a, or 10 to 15 it's not a big deal but you know i get up in the morning and i can see i get up in the middle of the night i can see <laughs> i decide for some reason i want to do a sleepover somewhere i don't have to remember oh i got to take out my contacts not that I had an opportunity for a sleepover in a while, but. So that's the main reason why I don't do, uh, or, or that's the main reason why I think that glasses are closer to my future. I just have to see what he thinks about my prescription in contacts today. Luane said he's doing his second live today at 3 p.m. my time. So include nine of carnival. Ooh, that reminds me. I got the missing pieces to my sister's clue nine. They showed up Monday or Tuesday. It must have been Tuesday because... It was the day after I asked my sister if she had heard anything back from the cotton test ticket. And I had asked her Monday, I think. Maybe it was Sunday that I asked and then it, it, she, she does. I don't know. Her tax season is finally over and I just don't remember everything. But uh, it arrived and they also gave a Villa Rosa pattern in it called Bowtie, which looked pretty fun. So I may end up doing that. At some point in the future. I don't know when because I've got so many other projects. But hey, it's a free pattern. It was folded in half, so it's a little annoying, but hey, I've still got a pattern. Good morning, Sue. I hope you're having a wonderful day. Kathy highly recommends trifocal glasses, one for reading, one computer, and one for far vision. And it works for your astigmatism. Yeah, the whole computer thing. Uh, like I said, I see fine on my bigger monitors, and I have everything at a, at a proper range for those. But uh, if we have to go into a conference room and I have the itty bitty screen, it's hard for me to see. <laughs> I do have a pair of readers in my backpack. Assuming I remember to pull them out for a conference meeting, conference room meeting. It was last year in January, we were stuck in the conference room with our consultant people and it was just a whole bunch of on the really tiny screens. And I could not see the screens anymore, so I just ended up getting a second pair of readers. Started packing them, and when I went in, I pulled out the readers. Everyone was like, wait, what? What? And I was like, I can't see. So uh, it helped a lot on the tiny screen. Because I wasn't doing the same thing that I remember seeing my parents do is trying to get things closer and further away to see and envision. 
I always mock them. I'm like, what do you mean you can't see? It's right there. And now I understand why they couldn't see. Luane said he got a Melissa Milligan Domino 5 or Foove free pattern in his replacement pack. That's pretty nice. I wasn't expecting anything free. I just, you know, wanted the pieces that were missing. But, you know, if they felt that they had to do something extra, they felt like they had to do something extra. Good morning, scrunchkins. Scrunchins. Scrunchins. That's the word. I hope you're having a good day. And Lynn Shepard says, Oops, late today. As I tell everybody, you are never late. You are perfectly on time. If you feel like you were late for something, then there's always the replay to come back to. So what I do with these is now that I got them in the pairs, I can just line them up, put the centers together, and uh, use that to nest and sew them together into basically a diagonal four patch. Uh, Scrunchin says she enjoyed Luane's video showing off his mom's quilts. I haven't caught that video yet. I saw that it was in the list. Yesterday was one of those crazy days at work again, so I couldn't use my normal Friday to catch up. So that's part of my weekend list is catching up on Friday videos and anything that shows up over the weekend. And spoiler alert, I have Monday off, so I can do a little bit even more catch up. Because I know that there's a whole lot of stuff going on on the weekends. And in case you forgot, 9 a.m. today was when Stephen, the Idiot Quilters, uh spring retreat sign up started so if you wanted to join in on his retreat and you haven't sent the email yet you better get your email going uh because he sells out very quick it's free but he's only got a certain number of spaces available and once those spaces are gone they are gone so you need to sign up if you are interested you can go to any of his videos to find the information on how to sign up. Uh, it's basically sending him an email with certain information. He put it in a video yesterday that I saw. So if you haven't and you want to join his retreat, uh, please go sign up. I will be attending the retreat because it's lots of fun. Always a blast. So. Uh, I am on the list. Uh, Sherry says she's wicked nearsighted. I love hearing the phrase wicked. Uh, think Velma, I can't see without my glasses. <laughs> she has progressive lenses and love them. Can see so much better. Too lazy for contacts. I Like I said, I am very lazy when it comes to contacts because... It's a lot of work, which is why I like the night and days. And uh, yeah, they are, they're just so much more convenient. And I have an oily nose. So anytime that I do wear glasses, I start breaking out. Even if I'm like cleaning my face like three times a day, it still breaks out. So. I do whatever I can to avoid the glasses. I mean, I will wear sunglasses because I need them, because they're bright lights. 
and uh, I have my readers now for when I sew because I can't see close up without them. It's a product of getting old. Uh, it's the um, the gel around your lens is a little bit more rigid, so it's a little bit more difficult to focus. Things that I, you know, didn't really know as a kid. Did I sew that? No, I didn't. I thought I sewed that inside. <laughs> But yeah, it's a it's a product of just older people. Once you hit like forty, it gets tougher for your vision to focus on near things. I laugh at my sister because she will lift her glasses up to see close up. And I think that's what I have to start doing whenever I'm wearing my glasses. But I always thought that was part of the fact that the glasses prescription that I have is at least one, possibly two levels out of date. Which means if I am heading for um, glasses, I need to get those whenever I, uh, or I shouldn't get my current glasses replaced because I want new frames when I get glasses. I want fun, almost quirky frames. Also, it might be wise for me to go like the day before or an hour before my appointment and just look at glasses with my contacts in so that, you know, you can see what you look like in your glasses. When I first got glasses, and then following while I was still wearing glasses, anytime I need a new pair, they were like, how do you like these glasses? I'm like, I can't see me in these glasses, so I have no idea how I like them. <laughs> when you really need to go with somebody that you trust to help you pick out your glasses. There's also the online companies. Uh, one of the YouTubers that I watch, which I know I'm subscribed, but I haven't seen one of his videos in my feed in a long time. So I need to go check his subscription status, but he, he gets sponsored by one of those glasses companies where they send you like three or four pairs of glasses in your prescription and you keep what you want and you return what you don't. I don't know how much I trust buying glasses online, but that's an idea. Provided they're cheaper. I'm almost done with my half square triangles. And once I get these done, it's fairly easy. Good morning, Nancy. I see a bunch of folks have 
registered for Steven's retreat. That is awesome. I'm sure he's having fun going through all of the emails that he has just received. Uh, Loane says, ever look through a glass of water and how blurry it is? That's what he sees out of his left eye due to CMV. I don't know what CMV stands for, but I have looked through water and I'm like, that's a little weird. Hopefully your glasses do fix that. Uh, Sherry says she does that too. Used to do more before the progressives, but still need to take them off for super up close. Yeah, there was a few weeks ago, I had my glasses on, uh, my normal seeing glasses, and uh, was in the in here sewing i think i was on a live and i'm just like i can't see the needle and lift them up and i wasn't quite getting clear enough vision to see the needle still because it was that far away uh scrunchin says since getting cataract surgery she has to wear readers to see close up it's been quite an adjustment so i'm assuming that means you can now see clear far away uh, that's kind of how my grandmother was, I think. Warby Parker, I think that's the company that does the, they'll send you a couple pairs, and they'll also send you, or they'll do a virtual try-on. And that's the other thing is with the virtual try-on, I got a crooked nose. Uh, I can tell you that from years. And... Uh, yeah, the whole crooked nose thing. They may look straight when it comes to a try-on because the algorithm that they try it on for you doesn't know that your nose is crooked. But as soon as you put it on, it's like... Uh, Sewing with Lane buys from iGlass... Or I buy direct online. Okay. And Stephanie says that her glasses are from Warby Parker. And she loves them. You do have some fun glasses. I do like your glasses, Stephanie. Okay, let me press these open and then we can get back to sewing the rest of this block together. I think my bigger concern is, like my sister has purchased glasses online and I'm guessing where the focal point is wasn't quite right. But I also feel like the same thing would happen at the eye doctor. Because if the person who's measuring your focal point is not just right, and the focal point is more important when you have astigmatism. Sewing with Wayne says cytomegalovirus infection. Uh, I know the word cyto, but I can't define it in my head immediately. Mega sounds big. And virus is an infection. So it sounds like a weird infection of the eye, which that's got to be horrible. Okay, now to get these four patches started. Uh, they go like this. And like this. And since this is the same as this, I can put all of my pieces like this 
and chain them. Good morning, Sue Ellen Quilts. I hope you're having a great day today. The weather here has been uh, pretty nice. It was a mostly comfortable week, even though we had a couple really warm days. Tuesday, I was walking Riley and ran into some neighbors, and they're like, you look like you're hot. And I was like, thank you, I just try my best, but I didn't know I was your type. And he just started laughing. Uh, and I was like, yeah, I'm mostly hot because I'm still in my work clothes. Because when I get home from work, Riley is my first priority. She gets to have her walk around the neighborhood before I get changed into shorts. So uh, she is first on the list. Oops, I have one of you wrong. Glad I caught that. At Saturday Sample, they were doing a little bit of remedial reminders. Um, some of it is we have some new folks in there and they slightly misread the instructions. And because the front of the instruction says it's 12 inch finished, and they didn't know the difference between finished and unfinished. So they trimmed down their block and the entire uh, room of Saturday Sampler winced at that second. And then she starts talking how, you know, somebody cut all their pieces and then decided to wash them after they cut them. And you heard a whole bunch of, <gasps> and that, and then a story from when the current shop owner had bought just she had just bought the shop. Somebody had bought a jelly roll and decided to throw it into the washer to pre-wash it. And when it came out of the washer, it was a hornet's nest. And she brought everything back and demanded her money back. And I'm like, can you really demand your money back if you did something stupid? So the um, they, they just reminded people at Saturday Sampler, hey, don't wash anything less than a quarter of a yard because that can be quite dangerous. And make sure you follow the instructions very closely. And if you need que have questions, ask. Don't. And then I said, she she said something about trimming up blocks, and I said, you're not supposed to trim your block until the very end. And she goes, you do make a point there because you, you may, if you trim your blocks down and then you have one that's slightly short, then you're going to have to trim everything again. I'm not a fan of trimming. And then she, she asked everybody, did we all measure our blocks when we were done? I'm like, nope. Because I don't measure anything until... I'm done with all the blocks. There's no point in me keeping a running total of the size of all my blocks when I can just spend five minutes to measure every single block to see what I need to trim everything down to. Because on the same thing, it's stupid for me to trim my blocks down to 12 and a half if all my blocks came out at, you know, 12 and 5 eighths. Because if all my blocks are 12 and 5 eighths, I just take the rest of the quilt as 12 and 5 eighths. Usually you get a little bit of extra little wiggle room for that. For like an eighth or a quarter of an inch.
So Ellen just finished cutting her husband's hair, now putting the final border on a very large quilt. I miss, you know, having haircuts in the family. Although, <laughs> I probably shouldn't tell this story. Uh, Mom went to hairdressing school when she was younger and stuff because that's what she thought she wanted to do. Uh, she later decided that she didn't, but she had the skills, so she would, for a while, cut my and my sister's hair. And my sister, I don't know what caused it to happen, but mom cut Fran's ear. It wasn't, you know, the whole, um, uh, did a Leonardo, what, no, it wasn't Leonardo. Whoever cut off his ear to give to his girlfriend, supposedly, which I'm now hearing is a made up story. Or how much of his ear he cut off was made of straw, or something like that. Uh, it wasn't that much. It was just a little nick in the ear. Just, you know. Tis but a flesh wound. And my sister just, you know, obviously she's, I'm going to say she's like four or five or something like that, completely freaking out. We end up having to get the next door neighbor because she was the one who was able to help calm Fran down. <laughs> but yeah, I don't think mom cut anybody's hair after that. My aunt also went to hairdressing school and when we would visit her through the summer, if we needed a haircut, she would give us one. And she did awesome work. Van Gogh. Okay, that's who it was. Because his ear was Van Gogh. Uh, Baluna says, morning all. Riley and she are heading to a training. Ooh, is Riley getting trained? My Riley is good in small situations where there's not particularly a large audience. Uh, if she thinks that she can get away with something, she will try to get away with it. Which is also why the reason why I keep her on a fairly short leash if we see another dog in the neighborhood because she will just try to go say hi and she goes from 0 to 100 in like 2 seconds and I'm not ready to deal with that Lynn says she just loaded an end-to-end -end quilting design on an embroidery machine to test it ooh so because I did this and the way I did it I can spin the center seam and open up my half square or quarter square triangle like this. Riley is trying to train you. Yes. Uh, that's what the cats tried to do with me. And they... Like, they all get upset if any of their schedules are, like, five minutes off. Finger press. Finger press. On open. And I think I'm going to spin the quarter or the half square triangle pieces. Maybe I'll call them bow ties for the corners.
it's just so satisfying when all of your pieces are spun the same direction and when everything nests. So there's the first one. So that's what they're going to come out as. Like I said, the pattern that I found, which is the same pieces, would have this piece as a different color, which I think that still looks just as gorgeous if you wanted to do it that way. And for these, the pattern that I had found, this up real quick. Come on. The pattern that I had found had would have this piece a different color. So it would be background, 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 and different color here. Like I said, they both work. And the way that this pattern is written, I think the way that your the pattern that I had found was written, these have to be trimmed down. I'll get those trimmed once I get the last one pressed. Actually, I should pull these off the machine. Since it's now just sewing the block together, there's no more easy chain piecing. Lynn says she loves the spring colored plaid that I'm using. I cannot take credit for picking the colors, but this is a fun plaid. The fabric line that this is using is called On the Bright Side. I've already forgotten who makes it. It's from Moda. Uh, me and my sister's designs. Okay, I have a selvage over there. So it was a lot of, um, like it's it's just the quilt shop who picks the colors. They have three different colorways that they are doing, and uh, it, I I I prefer more of the brights, so that's why I picked this one. Uh, they also have Bluebell and then uh, Perennial, I think was the other color way. I don't know which fabric lines those are, but they're fun. Uh, an advanced class so he can get his Canine Good Citizen certificate. He gets snake trained in a couple weeks. Um, yeah, I don't want to get snake trained. <laughs> Snakes are something that I do not want to have to potentially deal with. Good morning, Elaine. Running really late this morning? No, you're perfectly on time. Everybody who makes it to a live is perfectly on time to when they were is supposed to be here. Sue intended to sew this morning, but spent half an hour reorganizing 
her tool caddy. That just means you have that extra half an hour later to sew because you won't have to organize it again later. Good morning, Marie. Thank you, Pretty Fabrics. Like I said, it's not my fabric choice, but I'm loving what the choices are coming out to be. Okay, these are, okay, that's the size they're supposed to be. So I got to get these trimmed down to four and a half. What half of four and a half is two and a quarter. This is one of those times that having a rotating cutting mat and a four and a half inch ruler would save a lot of time. My four and a half inch ruler is back there somewhere and my cutting mat is not here. So I'm just going to cut one edge at a time. But to try to demonstrate what I do, because I know somebody's like, what is he doing? I have this diagonal line. So the way that I'm doing it is I'm lining the diagonal line on the diagonal line. And then trying to get that two and a half point here in the center. And again, I see that it's difficult to see in the camera, but Hopefully you can imagine one day I will get an overhead camera. Probably when I upgrade the camera that's in front of me. And then I just slice off the sliver and then rotate it and do the same thing. So that's how I'm able to get the, or that's how I'm trimming these down to four and a half. <coughs> Excuse me. The other way to do it is if you have an actual four and a half inch ruler, you can put the ruler at the four points and then you know that it's perfectly centered. And that's why I said sometimes a specialty ruler is useful. So if you're doing a lot of quarter square triangles, it becomes a lot more useful. But to be honest, there's not a lot of stuff that I cut that is four and a half inches. It's also great for fussy cutting if you need that, but... And then once you get two of your sides trimmed up, it's a lot easier because you then have your four and a half, four and a half inch on this side that you can line up against. And then you, you can line up your diagonal. So it helps.
I will have better cutting examples at some point in the future. One day I will get that first check from YouTube. <laughs> People think YouTube people make a lot of money. Uh, I've seen my ad revenue. <laughs> you don't. If you have millions of subscribers and millions of views, then yes, you do. But I don't do this for the paycheck. I do this because I'm having fun. The quote-unquote paycheck is nice to help upgrade some of my equipment, maybe buy a kit or two to work on, but there, there's not a lot when it comes per ad. And one more to trim down, and then we could put this baby together. So I said that I have an eye appointment this afternoon. Does anybody have any fun weekend plans? I do know that I have to avoid uh, my normal direction back from the eye doctor. Because they're doing a big giant event down at the square or center of town or whatever that area is over there i think my doctor oh no it's a run that they're doing today and i think my eye doctor is just out of distance from it i mean they're listed themselves as open today so got to be able to get there <laughs> Okay, let's see. They this goes together. Like that with this in the center. <laughs> like this, like this, and like this. That's going to be fun. So yeah, they, they list themselves as open. They're taking appointments for today. I'd like to imagine they would have checked the schedule. I just have to, like I said, turn left instead of turn right. Good morning, Shelly. Oh, the snake training is so he will avoid the rattlesnakes. That sounds a lot wiser.
definitely sounds wiser because, you know, doggos like to play with anything. Okay. Pulling up the pieces. Let me make sure the correct location. I giggle at the Facebook reels where it's a dog and it's being said in one of those AI generated voices that, you know, his mom is mad at me because, you know, I tried to save her from that evil squirrel and everything. And yeah, I just very amusing. My next door neighbor's dog caught a chipmunk once. And she, the mom, totally freaked out. And I'm like, Lulu doesn't know any difference. Oh, how fun. Elaine said that she is going to the high school to with her daughter and granddaughter to see Mamma Mia. That sounds like a lot of fun. Good morning, Mr. Jetlag Steven. Now you know how it feels with Alter getting up late. <laughs> Steven just got back from Australia. Uh, from what I have seen of his videos, which I still got to catch up on a couple. He's had a lot of fun. I'm kind of jealous of all of his Aussie adventures. Steven said he's feeling a little cloudy. Uh, hopefully the clouds will go away as you start, you know, checking your emails and getting everybody registered for your retreat. Mm, nah, nah. Okay. So I initially thought for pressing because... There's no pressing instructions that I would do to the center because these want to go to the center. But this seam, which is also this seam, really wants to head to the center even though the outside seam wants to go to the outside. So I think I'm going to press the two outside pieces to the center because this is wanting to fight more than this and then press the center seam out. No, no. See, I'm already trying to fight with myself the wrong way. Ah, <laughs> uh, Stephanie says she's glad that Steven is back. Again, did another pop-up so day for a few minutes. Not pop-up so day. Uh, Wednesdays with Steph. And with Stephanie and... Not one person that entire, like, 45 minutes I was on there asked to be spotlit. <laughs> so I'm wondering if Steven is just encouraging all the spotlights. <laughs> Steven's already had 50 sign up. Yeah, Steven, I, I did tell everybody uh, about 10, 15 minutes ago that if they were... Wanting to sign up, they better hurry.
Elaine says she registered this morning. Looking forward to May 4th. Out. And Pamela says, got a spot. Yay! Stephen's retreats are so much fun. In fact, the first retreat that I ever went to Stephen's, I did a presentation on. That was fun. So I did a presentation not even knowing what to expect. And the last seam. Yeah, I think this was the better set of directions to press. Thanks, Elaine. I now have Mamma Mia stuck in my head. <laughs> Maybe I will pop that up on the TV as I'm sewing later. Because heaven knows I can't pop it on now because I'll get copywritten. Strikes. Bonita says my fabric is beautiful. Thank you. I did not choose the fabric. Uh, this is a Saturday sample program, so they chose these fabrics. Uh, da, 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 da. But I do know that the fabric line is called On the Bright Side from three, me and my sister's design. Nope, I'm going to have to press these because these want to go inward. I'm going to have to press this inward this time. I try to let the seams go where they want on smaller blocks that I know are going to end up being sashed. If it's block to block, then hopefully the pattern designer has put pressing directions in. 
but when it's uh when i the all saturday samplers are generally sashed from my local quilt shop so i'll just press in whatever direction makes them feel better And with that, although I might put a victory lap on this later, here is the finished block. I like how this one came out. So I'll probably do a little bit of victory lap to tame these seams, or probably pull out the Acorn Easy Press pen, because that definitely keeps everything Flatter. her uh, Jackie says good morning it's already 79 in Phoenix all the way up to 95 this afternoon yeah there's a reason why I stopped going up to Phoenix for my friend David's birthday uh, that's gonna be crazy uh, da, 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 da. Jackie also loves the pastels Elaine, I hope you're not saying that you'd love to see me sing because you can't legally call what I do singing. <laughs> so yeah, another Saturday sample block done and I have it done in about an hour. I, I did do cutting ahead of time and this was just all sewing. But I love simple blocks like this. So it'll be a lot of fun. Don't know what next month is yet. I find that out sometime after first Sunday or first Saturday. So I will start hunting for the pattern for next month once I see what it is. Uh, but that is going to be the end of today. Uh, like I said before, if you haven't signed up for Stephen's retreat, please go sign up if you're interested. Don't sign up if you can't attend because uh, yeah, you can get blacklisted if you are signed up and then you don't attend. Uh, but if you know that you can make it, uh, it's always a lot of fun. Check out all the YouTubers that are out today and tomorrow. Uh, there's tons of lives that are available. Uh, I will be putting out my weekly vlog tomorrow evening. I will have the pictures of my show and tell that I did today at Saturday Sampler, um, assuming that they post it early enough. And all the shenanigans that have happened this week, including me not getting to the long arm yet again. And I hope you guys have a wonderful week. You'll be joining me next week for actual Fort Worth Fabric Studio Sunshine on My Mind sewing because we will have the first block instructions on Monday morning, bright and early, on how to start putting the first pieces together. I have seen the cutting instructions i know it's being cut and i have no idea what blocks are being put together any of the months or any of the weeks so i'm very looking forward to that so come join me next week if you have the opportunity and you can sew along with sunshine on my mind or you can bring your own projects so i will see